everyone. Are you ready for another Fine Scale Modeler Weekly? We are, and we have an exciting lineup of kits for you. Starting with an atypical variant of a well-known subject. From Dora Ways, here's a 148 scale P47B, as in Bravo, Thunderbolt. This is the first production variant of Republic's hard-hitting fighter. Only 177 were built before production shifted to the P47C, and they were mostly used within the United States, with one being sent to Brazil. Typical of Dora Wings kits, surface detail consists of extremely fine recessed panel lines, some raised panels, and good-looking fasteners and vents. The wings feature separate ailerons, internal wheel well detail, and open spent shell chutes. The flaps are molded stowed. This kit uses early fabric covered elevators and rudder, but metal skin control surfaces on the parts trees hint that a P47C is likely forthcoming. The detailed cockpit floor and sides are complemented by the rear bulkhead, seat, instrument panel, pedals, and other controls. Up front sits a nice replica of the R2800 engine with well-molded cylinder banks, push rods, reduction gear housing that all mount to the firewall inside a two-part cowl with a single-part cowl lip. Nicely rendered oil cooler and supercharger intakes fit under the engine, and there's detail inside the supercharger exit. The big prop builds from interlocking blades with separate hub. The gun blast tubes are molded together, which should help alignment, and are covered by leading edge inserts. Tires and hubs are separate, and there's detail inside the gear doors. The windshield and canopy are separate, but the latter is not designed to be posed open as it includes the turtle deck windows used on a few P47Bs. Lights and the gun sight glass are included in clear plastic, and pre-cut masks are provided. Photo etch metal supplies a seat harness, some controls, gun sight parts, gear bay parts, and other details. Sharply printed decals give stencils along with markings for four aircraft. A P-47B flown by Colonel Zemke with the 56th Fighter Group at Bridgeport, Connecticut in September 1942. A rather plain looking plane at Wright Field, Ohio. Lucky 7, the 7th serial P-47 from Republic. And a colorful Brazilian Air Force trainer in October 1944. This is a great looking kit of the early Thunderbolt and it should look right at home next to P-47Ds from the likes of Tamiya and Hasegawa and Ravel and so forth. And the promise of a C, the first variant to see combat, is equally great news. The M1070 and M100 tank transporter is a big vehicle, but Tacken made it a manageable model with a 172nd scale kit. The company has released it a couple of times with different vehicles for the trailer. Now it's back, this time without any load, as just the 70 ton tank transporter. The plastic is pretty much the same as the original kit. You can see our video preview of that at the link in the description. Briefly, you get a nice cab and chassis for the tractor, along with suspension, interior, wheels and axles. The trailer has the bed, neck, wheels and suspension. There's also a bunch of vinyl tires, clear parts including the cab doors, and a fret of photo etched brass with engine screens, wipers, and mirror supports. New here is an Arctic Winter Grill cover that can be fitted in place of the standard grill. The decals and color diagrams have markings for the desert camo and NATO camo trucks in the original kit, but there are also markings for one of the M1070 huts provided to Ukraine. All in all, this is a good update for a really nice kit. And imagine building a Ukrainian version with a T72 on the back. That would be kind of cool. That should be really cool. ICM wild modelers a couple of years ago with its series of 132nd scale Cobra helicopters. Then it pleased smaller scale builders with a 148th scale version. Now it hits a new scale with a 135th AH-1G Cobra late production. Given that there isn't a lot of difference in size between 135th and 132nd, the part breakdown and assembly is identical between the kits. For a close look at the detail you can expect, check out our video preview of the original 132nd scale kit at the link in the description. Needless to say, surface and interior detail, including the rotors and tail, skids and engine sections, ordnance and clear parts are first rate. New here are the options on the crowded decal sheet that has stencils and markings for four Vietnam War Cobras, the Magical Mystery Tour from Company D, 229th Attack Helicopter Brigade at Quan Loi in 1971, an AH-1G from the 175th Attack Helicopter Company, Bushwhackers Platoon at Vinh Long in 1971, one wearing a big shark mouth from the 129th Attack Helicopter Company at An Son in summer 1972, and Hammerhead, a Cobra with Troop F, 8th Cavalry Regiment at Chu Lai in autumn 1972, as well as another shark mouth wearing Cobra from the 3rd Squadron, 8th Cav at Mainz, Finthen, Germany in autumn 1973.
This is another great looking kit from ICM and I expect it'll go together nicely like its slightly larger brothers. Indeed. Look for a review of the P47 at FindScale.com. Where we have a ton more content like show galleries and videos, how-to stories and videos, and reviews and build videos. I'm sensing a pattern here, Kendra. Do we have a lot of, like a lot of videos on the website? We do. We have a lot of videos on the website, so you should go there and check it out. And while you're there, head on over to ComebackHobbyStore.com for all kinds of tools and accessories, including these microscale products. Fine Scale Modeler Weekly is brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been discussing paint compatibility. What kind of paint can you spray over another kind of paint and not have the layer on top affect the coat underneath? We thought, you know what? Let's do some experimenting with acrylics, enamels, and lacquers. To the workshop. So what we've already done is pre-primed some plastic spoons with some Tamiya white primer, which is in and of itself a lacquer. And now what we're going to do with this one is the usual order of operations with a lacquer over the top of a lacquer, enamel on, on top of that, and then acrylic on top of the enamel. Let's take a look. First up, we're going to use SMS lacquers, all ready pre-thinned and ready to go right out of the bottle. Next, we're going to use some Ravel red email color enamel thinned with color mix. And this is going to go right over the top of our yellow SMS lacquer. At the same time, we're just gonna go and spray red enamel right on top of the Tamiya primer. For the acrylic color, we're gonna use Vallejo Model Air NATO Black. Then we're just going to base coat two of these with the NATO Black, right on top of the Tamiya Primer. Now we're going to take the SMS Lacquer and we're going to go over the acrylic and the enamel paint to see what kind of reaction there is. First, the acrylic. Uh, we've got good coverage there. We'll see what happens. Now we're gonna do the lacquer over the enamel. Last, we're gonna put the red enamel over the black acrylic. So we sprayed the spoons yesterday. We've waited a day just to let everything dry down to see how things are going to shake out. And I'll have to admit, things didn't shake out necessarily how we expected them to shake out. But that's okay. Let's start going through what we know. First, the test spoon. On top of white Tamiya primer, we put yellow SMS lacquer. Then we put red Ravel enamel. And then lastly, we put some NATO black Vallejo acrylic paint on there. And all of those went down. They look fine. We got flat, we got gloss, and then sort of a semi-gloss there. And no problems at all. Now, what I do want to point out, and you guys probably noticed this, is that when I was putting those on, I wasn't necessarily going light. I was throwing the paint on there just as if somebody new was throwing paint on there just to see what would happen, right? Good thick coats. Next up, we have our enamel over 
acrylic. And as you can see, that is pretty nice and glossy. It's got a nice deep tone to it. And the enamel does not look like it has affected the acrylic undercoat at all. Next, we've got the SMS lacquer over the Vallejo acrylic. That Vallejo acrylic went on really, really well, served as a super solid base. We put on the SMS over the top of it. And as you can see, it's got a nice smooth finish. It didn't interact harshly with the acrylic paint underneath at all. That little thing right there, that's me. That was when I was spraying the white uh, uh, primer and I nicked the spoon otherwise. So that's on me. Other than that, the lacquer did really well. Finally, we have the lacquer over the Revell red enamel. Um, again, overall, it worked pretty well. I'm not sure we can see it on camera, but right here, right in this area there, we did get a bit of crackle where it started to affect the enamel underneath. Now, overall, it worked pretty darn well. If this is out on an area that's easily accessible to you on your model, you're probably just gonna buff that down and you may come back in and hit it again with the lacquer over the top. If it's in an inaccessible spot on your model, probably not something that you wanna necessarily see happen. So what have we learned? We've learned that sometimes an experiment doesn't go the way that you expect. There is a reason why the common wisdom is the common wisdom. And that is, over the course of years, we have discovered that lacquers tend to eat through the things that are underneath them, unless they are other lacquers. Or, I won't say tend, they can. They can interact unfavorably. Enamels can do the same thing, whatever's underlying them too, acrylic paint. The experiment that we did Hardly exhaustive. We used three colors from three different manufacturers, right? Vallejo, Revell, and SMS. And those are all reasonably new formulations. The carriers in them could be more stable. You know, just the overall technology in them could be better than the technology of paints in the past. The important thing is this. If you absolutely must, use a lacquer over an enamel or a lacquer over an acrylic or an enamel over an acrylic, test those paints off of your model. Don't just go in there and spray it onto your model right away. Test it somewhere else so that you know that the paints that you're using are not going to have a bad interaction with each other. There's another point I wanna to make too, and that is we airbrushed all of these colors. And while I did flow them on there, pretty hard, there's a difference between using paint through an airbrush and using paint through a spray can. Remember, if you're using spray paint, you're going to be dealing with um, propellant, and you're also going to be dealing with more volume of paint coming out, and that can affect the results. So remember, just be careful, test off of your model, and if your paints play well together, Go ahead and do it. Aaron and I headed off to Texas to visit the IPMS USA National Convention. It was hot. It was. Uh, both uh, outside and also inside the contest room. Oh, there were a whole bunch of models oh, in there. You, look <laughs> at you. All right. A whole bunch of models in there. <laughs> Plastic ones, dude, uh, don't go there. God, Why? Why would you, you do that? Why anyway, would you do that? So, you know, besides <laughs> us shooting a bunch of uh, a bunch of, of photos, and then we had a thing a that we seminar. did. Yes, seminar. Yes, seminar. <laughs> seminar that we did. How <laughs> soon they forget. I was like, what, what, what do we call it? Yeah, <laughs> question and answer. Yes, a seminar thing. Yes. And then I shot some video. So here it is.
Well, what'd you think? Those were some really good looking models. I mean, I saw them in person. They look really good on the videos. Yes. And if you like them, check out the gallery Which, we have on our website. Yes, there's lots more. They're not only the Nationals Convention Gallery, but a ton of other galleries too that you can go and see a lot of really good models. This has been a heck of a year. Yes. I mean, I think for us, our convention season kind of runs from August to August, right? It, Pretty you know, much. It's like yeah. IPMS, Nats, marks the end of convention season. And then for us, it'd probably be the next bigger show would be Nordicon. Right. Right. And that sort of marks our beginning of yes. the next cycle of, of conventions for us. Right. So anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. And open spent shell shoots. It's like I said that five times fast. <laughs> the gum blast tunes. <laughs> gum blast tunes sounds like a band. You're not ready, are you? <laughs> no, I had to look down again. You're looking down at me? No, I was looking down at the script. Which you know. <laughs> yeah, so take me yeah, bye bye, yeah. So, no, I don't know what you're filming, dude. Gotta adjust my hair. Next, we're going to use. <laughs> Stop making me laugh! I'm trying. <laughs> Next, we're going to use some Revet. Revet, Revet. 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 We're going to use some Revet. Oh, we're going to. The paint's going to dry in the airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting I'm over really here, like... and all I can see is this yellow cloud <laughs> washing over me. Then, then the deer in the headlights thing happens. <laughs>